Hooray. Okay. Just trying to make sure things are all set up correctly. Kanji's waiting for his dinner. That's why he's going to behave over there. Um, Jeff, if you could let me know if sound is okay. Because I, I changed some minor things to make sure it all works out. I think I threw the closed captioning on too. So all that should be <laughs> working. I think I remembered everything this time around, finally. Yes. Excellent. If it gets too loud, let me know. Um, or if things peek out at all. So hello. Yeah, today I am celebrating the seventh anniversary of Guild Wars 2. And we are making an old recipe. So we're going to train up before we do an ascended recipe, which now this recipe I've done a few times. Um, <laughs> yes, one recommendation is be careful watching this while you're hungry because you will get hungry. There is food and also fire soul. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, be nice and quiet back there. So I, my name is uh, Victoria or Vicka and I Oh yeah, Jeff gets to smell all the food. I recreate foods from video games. So today we're focusing on Guild Wars 2. If you would like to follow along or eventually make these, this recipe, you could go ahead and hit exclamation point menu and it'll point you out to the stuffed pepper recipe right now. Tomorrow I will be posting the second recipe that we're doing. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, that one just turned it down some. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> Got a we need those smell o visions that come out now so everyone can enjoy. What's up, Cheese Pizza? Heck yeah. Um, Cheese Pizza is actually a fellow Team Bone In member. Um, if you are looking for other wonderful uh, food streamers, I highly recommend following him also. I'm going to do SL. Yes, my commands work. When they work, I'm so happy. So right, I'm going to get started because these peppers do need about 40 minutes in the oven. Um, so in between that is when we'll start the mango cilantro creme brulees. Hi, Crow. How are you this evening? Let's see. Let's see. What does my own recipe say? These streams have been a good way for me to test much, much older recipes and go, past self, what have you done? So I have one modification that I am making this evening. The recipe does call for ground beef. Um, Jeff and I are trying to reduce our red meat consumption right now, so I am replacing it with ground turkey. Not much is going to change, <laughs> and that should be good. I also... Before we started, I pre-cooked my rice. It's sitting in a rice cooker right now. Just little things to save time and make sure. Yes, I... <laughs> when I try to match things in the game, I notice a lot of games like to use red meat. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do this. Um, so whenever I get a chance, when I remake them, I'm like, oh, chef, I really don't feel like red meat. Eh, I could get away with the turkey instead. The music in like my on the TV coming out, I'm like, it's very loud. But I know that's not going to be picked up. So I'm going to go ahead carefully. Which I think I sharpened my knife recently. So we should be safe there. Whoop, whoop. Make sure I follow. Follow my own rules. Yep, diced. Like, technically, I could be double tasking here. So this is where, usually, if you are a beginner cook, I would definitely recommend preemptively cutting your on. Oh, Kanji wants to be part of the stream now, vocally, too. Man, if I could get a great sword and be able to cut with precision with that, that would be amazing. <laughs> Let me say that. Um, so one recommendation with any of these recipes on the site, and I will emphasize it heavily with the creme brulee, if 
you are new to the kitchen, have everything prepared beforehand. Pre-cut your onions, pre-cut your your mushrooms and be ready to like just toss things in so you're not multitasking. Myself, I'm a bit leveled up in my cooking crafting. Uh, so I'm able to like get things done kind of simultaneously. I say that and now I'm prepared to like screw up, <laughs> but we should be fine. I'm going to start, yes, this oven that is on there. I'm going to go ahead and start preheating this because the first thing I want to do back there is I want the turkey to get browned a little bit. I'm going to reduce the time on that because it is turkey and we don't want it to dry out. And yeah. For those of you who do play Guild Wars 2 that are in here right now, um, have you guys tried the newest crafting, the, the latest Ascended crafting? If you have, what recipes have you been enjoying? Because I know you do have to hit 500 to get access to those, which I was happy. The wiki has everything listed now. All the beautiful pictures. <laughs> Also, before the stream started, I did rinse all my veggies, so all those are clean. I managed to find time between getting home from work and then coming back and being like, I gotta set everything up! Oh, bye, Kanji. I gotta watch the clock, because it is almost his dinner time, too. So if he'll get antsy about that. Let me change one thing. That struggle. Man. Hangry. I know that term very well. <laughs> I, I live by it. If I'm hungry, I get angry. <laughs> this kind of doesn't get hangry. I don't think he does. Sup, Vineyard? How are you? Vineyard is another member of the uh, Bone-In team. Jeff, do you know the the command? Exclamation S-O and then their name and you could give them a shout out. Sh they are also a... Heck yeah. I did make that go. Yes! When my commands work, it is a great day. Also a fellow food streamer. There's a lot of us. A lot of variety out there. We all make delicious foods. Okay. So I'm moving my onions to the side. Since I've done that, I'm going to put the ground turkey on the heat, since that's preheated some. I have my oven preheating. Get it all going. All happening at once. <laughs> Yesterday, um, oh, let's see. Yeah. All the good people are there. Yeah, yesterday, Jeff and I went through and played some Guild Wars 2. And we went through and did a few of our favorite jumping puzzles. Because we were definitely missing those after playing some other games and going, Ooh, no. <laughs> Jumping's done bad in this game. So it was nice to go back to that and, and actually be able to complete the puzzles that we loved. We knew and loved. I think I'm gonna, I was sad we didn't get to do the Chalice of Tears last night. That one is always a fun little challenge to do. So yeah, you would love Jeff's character. Uh, we went around with the Puzzle Fairy. Uh, his wonderful character that it is there to save us. 
think at one point, Jeff, you might have had a, you had a character like parked at the Aether Blade one. That's probably that was one of the puzzles that was on the absolutely not list. I I don't like that one. But the puzzle fairy is an amazing mesmer that was gear <laughs> that was boosted to level eighty. Yep, there it goes. Boosted to level eighty and just used for portals. That's all. Oh my god, I remember monthlies. It was just like, we gotta get all this done. <laughs> wow. Hello, Mida. How are you? Ooh. You got your, your cosplay robes. Excellent. Go ahead. So this is starting to heat up. I'm going to just give you a little, little, little love taps. I feel like because I switched pans, that moved on me. I had a smaller pan earlier, and I was like, oh, doing pretty good. Going to be hungry. <laughs> but then I'll be fed and happy. And what would that be? Yep. So yeah, my bot gets very angry at links. Okay. Just gonna remove. Yeah, no. No links, but feel free. You could message me at separately because we never we never know <laughs> the soup thank you Jeffrey <laughs> oh no wait <laughs> thank you Jeff for fixing that oh nice oh this is the one you were telling me about Heck yeah, I'll check that out after the stream. How's that project going for you? Not too much done. Yeah, it takes... Doing cookbooks takes a bit. I know from experience. <laughs> Writing up recipes in general <laughs> takes a bit. There's a lot of concepting, figuring things out. I'm going to throw some salt pepper on here. I'm going to start smelting in there. If anything, then you could uh, gear your recipes towards your diet change, if anything. <laughs> Says me as I was like, well, when I do a recipe from a, a game and it has the, the red meat, I'm like, I ought to put that in. Definitely. Trying to, to make some changes, but it, when... <laughs> I, the, w the worst offender is desserts. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, that's right. Is there garlic in this recipe that I goofed? I'll have the garlic in the fridge. You gotta get that. Do this. Where is my garlic? My lazy garlic. You know what? It doesn't even just have to be ground turkey. I've just in general. Garlic in everything. 
one one moment to try to why is that not that's weird I'm gonna ignore that then let me just minimize that and not worry about that dun 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 scary stuff I have not Alright, let's see what we got for this recipe. So, we got all of that cut up. I got my turkey doing its thing. Once it finishes reaching this point, we're going to add the onion and the mushrooms. And then we're going to add the, the garlic, too. So, I'm actually pretty confident, I say, to take... Oh, yeah, we're going to take this... We're going to brown it up, and then we're going to take it out. Get rid of it, and then we'll start the onion. Let's see. Onion in the same pan. Onion and mushrooms. Cook until the this gets thrown in at the same time. Okay, past self. If that's what you say. And if it all turns out wrong, I could blame the past self. Sounded like a peace film. But there we go. So we can actually because the action still camera. Hello? Hello? Oh it did. <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm like clicking the button, I'm like, change? I'm like, oh it's already changed. So after that cooks a bit, I'm, I am going to drain it and put it on a, a paper towel. Uh, I realized ground turkey can sometimes be a lot juicier. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really bad at watching movies. <laughs> In general. <laughs> it's one of the things I... I tend to not make an effort for. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure the last movie I saw in theaters was Moana. So that was a while ago. Never ever watching movies. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to roughly chop this. I'm going to keep listening behind me because I need to swap a root that. I'm also very, very excited for... I'm excited for Friday because Arena Nets having their special live event to see what's next in the game. So I'm excited to see where where the story will be taking us. Because that is definitely the thing I do the most. I make sure to catch Guild Wars 2 when their new story's out. Alright, I'm gonna actually going get a bigger plate. I'm gonna put a paper towel on this just to to drain things out. I'd hope to be working on another cookbook at some point, um, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Nothing currently. I would uh, like it's something I'd I'd like to continue doing, but we'll see. Boop, 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 boop. It's all a matter of like f finding the right companies that are interested, and with the publisher seeing who else would be interested in doing things. So this is not one of my bloodstone recipes. I do have bloodstone recipes on the site. There are two. <laughs> I have found a way to make bloodstone an ingredient. I 
exercising. That's, that's some good stuff. Lovely assistant Jeff, if you could pull up some bloodstone recipes, that'd be great. One of them is actually one of them is from the help of Jeff because I don't drink coffee much, but he definitely helped out with that. Oop. Excellent. Heck yeah. We got coffee and ice cream. It's definitely too late for coffee. And I don't... <laughs> my site hasn't had ice cream recipes in a while because my ice cream maker <laughs> broke, I think, a year ago. So, I have... I think like two, wow, one wild wow rest, two wild wow, wow recipes. <laughs> um, but I haven't played WoW since. Two thousand eight. <laughs> Does that sound right? Two thousand. Two yeah, two thousand eight, maybe. Idiot's Front is a great one. And usually one I take because I play melee characters in Fallout. <laughs> and I ain't need no intelligence. Yeah, I know a lot of people are really excited for WoW Classic. I have personally no interest to go back to that. That was a, a time in my life. That no, was fine. It was wonderful. I met a lot of people. It's actually right when we got into college. Okay, so I'm not into black tea, but I live by green tea. Like, that is my way of life. <laughs> I don't like coffee. <laughs> no. And I think more people need to appreciate teas. I'm, I am happy. I did figure out, like, a nice-ish London fog where I used almond milk and some black tea, which for me it was nicer because it was nice and, and sweet. So it definitely took out that bitterness. Heck yeah. So, there is a WoW cookbook. If you've seen that. that that's like an officially licensed one. Same company that I worked with, but a different author. And that one's pretty good. Hey, Jeff, if it's classic, they're definitely going to be making food. Okay, let's see. Reading, 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 reading. Mushroom soften at B. Back. Put that garlic in. Oop. Ah. I will need you still cutting board. So one of the earlier steps called for... Ooh, I'm so sorry, everyone. I, like, banged... The camera. <laughs> Let's not have that happen again. No, oh, no. <laughs> Just bread and water. It, it's been a while since we've played. <laughs> Six ounces. It's basically almost all of this. Almost all of it. So I really like these uh, these tube ones. I probably should have bought a, s a can of this. I'm pretty sure this uses most of a can. The tube ones are nice because I have a lot of recipes where it's like, you only need two tablespoons of it. And it's like, what am I going to do with this? Doesn't see it. They never seal well. Like the can. If you do the can, it never like 
blast, and then it goes to bed. This little tubes are real nice for long, uh, prolonging the light, the shelf life on there. Okay, so right now, yeah, I'm gonna show it in this one. So I have the tomato paste and some water in there. And I'm mixing that together to kind of loosen the paste up a little bit. I have not heard of that show. <laughs> so bad at media sometimes. Biscuits, croissants, brownies, cup. Oh my god. Mage has got like a part time job at a. A cafe or something. I guess a coffee shop. And this. And mixerino here. Okay, so we got that mushroom, onion, a garlic. Loveliness happening here. want to make sure I'm doing this correctly till that's softened mostly translucent we're almost at that stage <laughs> level one water oh you brother sometimes I swear yeah it's yeah, we played right when up until the first expansion came out and then said, we're out, we're done. Hey, sometimes you gotta teach them who's boss. It's like right now we're playing, uh, <laughs> playing Final Fantasy XIV also, and there are just times where I'm like, I'm, I play a healer, and I'm like, you're misbehaving, DPS. I'm not healing you anymore. You're not going to learn your lesson unless you die. <laughs> or I use the rude move, and I rescue them and move them out of where they should be. <laughs> okay, so, got my meat in here. Don't need to warm it up for too long. I'm going to add a bunch of seasonings. So, I'm going to add a bunch of oregano. There's numbers on the website. <laughs> I think it's like two teaspoons of the oregano, one teaspoon of the basil, a bit of thyme. So, I guess what WoW Classic, is it... Are they looking for group things in there? Like the party finder and stuff? Because I don't know. For some reason, I don't remember any of that quality of life being there. Oh, no. Okay. So we got all that. We got our spices. And we're just mixing this all together to make sure it's nice and happy. Pretty sure my next step is add the paste and then add the tomato sauce. And I should have prepared my peppers. <laughs> but that's fine. It'll allow this to cool down that a little more. So I'm going to go ahead and add the paste. And then I'm going to mix that in and add the sauce too. I could probably add that at the same time. And after that, we're going to add the <sighs> oh. oh, no, vanilla one. <laughs> I guess the nice thing is you you get to play vanilla wow with the s your same like wow subscription, right? Like it's is is it a separate pur purchase? know how it works. I will say it was funny. I, like, 
a few of our old like guild mates that we played uh wow with did message us going oh hey are you gonna come play if you or if you guys want to play you can join us and i was like no thank you just playing more modern mmos in general even wow in its current state, I can't imagine going back. I've played, so, played, and still play, um, from time to time, Warcraft 3. That is something we always go back to. Love them little, uh, the custom maps. Rice is deciding to be rude. Loosen it up. So if you're making this recipe, I know the recipe calls for cooked rice in there. Cook the rice however you desire, like what you're used to. I've had a rice cooker for years now, and it is probably one of my like top recommended tools to have in a kitchen <laughs> because it just makes life easier <laughs> very easy especially if you're going to be making a bunch of recipes and you need to make a lot of rice it's real nice just to be able to go okay here set it forget it work on everything else that you need to do um i do know yeah there's there are a good chunk of recipes in guild wars 2 that require rice so it's always a good thing to have I know this past week, Jeff and I, for like breakfast, we've been having just rice with a little bit of uh, rice vinegar and then some eggs and smoked salmon. It's like, oh, this this is nice. This is different from just having toast <laughs> in the morning. Mix in. Now with the bell peppers, there's a few ways you can do it. Um... Maybe I will cut, no, gotta make them look like the, the in-game image. That's what we're doing tonight. If you don't wanna wait the entire 40 minutes, you can cut them in half and have them open-faced and that'll kind of speed up the time instead of it being a whole pepper. So that is a nice little tip for you. Well, thank you for stopping by, Vineyard. You have a wonderful evening, and I'll try to make sure to catch your, you said it was your weekend stream, Sunday. Going to check it out. I'll see it on Twitter when you announce it, but yeah, I'd love to see your, your World of Warcraft-themed recipes. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut the tops of these and remove the seeds that are in here because you don't want that. So I'm actually going to turn off the heat because everything here is cooked, but we just want to... I'm going to let it cool a little bit. We'll just kind of let that sit big. We'll switch back to this camera. I'm not sure if it would wouldn't have like the, the hardiness of it. Obviously you'd get the protein benefit from there. <laughs> Visually it could kind of give almost a similar feel, that's for sure. Go ahead and place that there. I know the next recipe that we are going to be working on, the creme brulee, is going to require us to use egg yolks. So, one of the nice thing is, well, one of the unfortunate things is you're going to end up with egg whites, but there's that benefit of, well, I'll just use them tomorrow morning and use them in <laughs> for breakfast. Perfect. <laughs> Got to use all parts of the, all parts of the buffalo. Oh my God, Kanji, why aren't you asking for your dinner? 
It's like 10 minutes late. <laughs> oh, no. No, Kaiji's not even looking. You got him? Okay, right. excellent. Thank you, Jeff. Whoop! <laughs> Gonna lose a pepper. So, yeah, as I mentioned, um, if you want them to cook a little quicker, just cut them this way. And then they'd sit in half. So they'd make for smaller portions, but you don't get that crazy, like, oh, here's this big old pepper that you could eat. I thank you. Jeff says, it smells good in here. That is the smell update for everyone. <laughs> Ooh. I like having excuses to add eggs into things. I'll be honest. That's just kind of a, a thing. And it's I definitely much prefer having it for breakfast now. Let's save this for another day. Compared to having cereal. <laughs> definitely cut cereal out a few years back, and that's always been that was a nice change. Not having a bunch of a bowl of sugar to wake up. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep cutting these. Give me these tops. Oh, it's perfect. I'm going to have extra egg whites. I'm going to have these extra bell pepper tops. Got a breakfast already. Look at that. Nice little egg white omelet. It's all working out. Ooh. My mom has, I don't know if she still uses it, a homemade granola recipe. It's always really good. She still has it written somewhere. Ah. So now here's the easy part of this recipe. So we've done, at this point, all the heavy lifting is done. Ish. <laughs> I'm going to move this over. Heavy lifting. <laughs> heavy lifting as I, like, lift this heavy... Only. Oh, you're gonna feed him over there? Yeah, you can. Main and kanji. Oh, I forgot I put these pictures. So this is the pepper that. <laughs> can you see how excited he is about dinner? I wish everyone could be that excited. Ooh. That sounds fancy. Midas. Okay, so uh, gotta gotta get that nice zoom in of the kanji. Yeah, don't see, I mean you can't zoom in. <laughs> That's a cheap webcam. All right, now the easy part of this recipe. I'm gonna go ahead. No, you can't just take it. Actually, I should probably make sure it's seasoned enough. No. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Dang. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just, it, just stuff them up. Now, I know on the website it has like a range of peppers that you could have. It really depends on the size of the bell peppers you get. Um, I got six. Uh, bell peppers here in Texas tend to run pretty large. Actually, most. This is definitely one, one of the trickier things with uh, with recipe writing. In Texas, everything's a lot, all the veggies are a lot larger. 
So to be like, one medium onion is like, oh, that's probably a large onion to most people. <laughs> so that, that is tricky. I definitely know with like the uh, the Fallout book, there were moments where I was just like, um, yes, that seems right. I probably could have grabbed more bell peppers. This is this is what I got. So yeah, I am jamming it uh, pretty packed in there. Worst case, we'll put some. Oh, I forgot. I know the recipe doesn't have sweet peas in it. I bought some and then I didn't grab it. Um, one thing my mom would do with this recipe a lot of time is add sweet peas into it. And it makes for a nice little, like, <laughs> extra texture in there. I also noticed while I was like looking at the picture today, I was like, wait a second, there's some green in there. Man, I could have gotten away with having sweet peas like in the recipe. Can't go back and always change it if we want, but no need to for today. We're following the recipe that I wrote. So on top, so with the, the extra that I do have on here, I'm going to top them up a little more so it's not like just this flat plane of stuffed pepper. I'm going to have it a little more. Stuffed up. So I'm also going to probably put a, a little bit of aluminum on there just so it doesn't shuffle on me. Like, where did I put that? Where did it go? <laughs> Hi, Kanji. Oh, you got them big licks? Hold on. Let's show up. Let's tease it with the Kanji. Something Kanji does in the morning is when he, when either Jeff or I feed him, he'll go into the bathroom to the other one and be like, I haven't eaten yet. And then he starts like licking his chops like he kind of is right now. And it's like, Kanji, we could, we could tell you ate. <laughs> You're really bad at hiding that you just ate right now. <laughs> Was that tasty? Did you have a delicious dinner? Just shovel this in front of me, and I'm just kind of like, I'm gonna let this go. So, this part, so the creme brulee, and hmm, let me think about this for a moment. I have to think about timing. I'm gonna let it mostly go for the 40 minutes. It's more so that the, um, the bell pepper itself is cooked through. I might cut that down a little short, but we'll see. Kind of depending on how quick that creme brulee gets done. <laughs> What's up, Pally? How are you today? It's like, no, stop it. So I know growing up, so that is unfortunate because, like, the red ones and the green ones are the cheap ones. <laughs> um, but I definitely, growing up, was always like, I just want, yeah, the yellow and the orange ones. Those are the better ones. I do think green peppers are, like, probably the most boring of all of them. I have a little more. Because I don't want these, like, shuffling on me. Because these are 
These bell peppers are much taller than I'm used to using. So I am doing quite well today. Definitely eventually excited to eat. So I'm going to switch the camera real quick so you guys get a top view. So there are the peppers in their lovely little baking sheet. I add, like I said, I added the aluminum just so they won't shuffle on me too much. And so they stand up because they're so tall. I have my oven set and already preheated. I'm just going to pop that in. And that'll be good. <laughs> it tries to glide away from me. So that'll be good to go. Jeff, there is a little extra if you would like some. What I'm going to do right now... I'm going to separate those tops of the bell pepper. Now, if you want, if you cut them real nice, you could put those right on top. That is definitely something that you can actually turn my camera. Whoop. Um, definitely something you can do. Again, we're matching the image of the game. So we're going to go ahead and not keep the tops on. I'm going to make sure there's no need, no need to waste this. But I use it in the morning. Make something delicious. Heck yeah. Because you're, you're not even in the camera. <laughs> He's like, I ate. I'm done. My loose one. Vendertron, thank you so much for that um, host. How are you today? I'm going to go ahead and switch room. I mean, Jeff, if you want some, go for it. Because that's extra. And it's still warm. <laughs> Two sieves. That camera's off right now. I'm going to put this away. So that recipe is basically done. So at this point, it's just going to sit in there. The next one is a little, a little, little, little bit more complicated. Oh, no, you got to make it. You gotta make it. Did you get spooked by it? <laughs> Spooky recipe. Your new torch. All right. You have to do it like with your little hand, kind of like like you're in the frame. Wait, hold on, let me edit something. I feel like the lighting's been super weird in here. Take some. Enjoy. Actually, this is perfect because I could see you in the cat. There we go, that looks a little better. So, you have to duck down. I, I zoomed it in. <laughs> Um, so, all right, now the one thing that my mom likes to do with this, so there, my mom used to make a very similar, used to, has made a f very similar dish. Um, what she likes to do, if you want to add a little bit of creaminess, yeah, that's going to hurt you, is, uh, you throw in a little bit of mayo. <laughs> now, that 
keeps dairy out of it, but I think it adds a nice little tang to it, which that's just a little secret. I've not made that recipe in a long time. I think because most of the time when I'm thinking of food to eat for the week, I'm like, oh, uh, that has meat, red meat in it. I don't want to make red meat. But silly me, ground turkey. Of course that's an option. So I guess I could have myself. It's definitely a little different, and you don't want to add too much into it at once. Because if you add too much, then you'll be sad. I mean, technically when we went to Japan, there were a few pizzas. There were a few things that would typically have like dairy in it, and it was replaced with mayo. Definitely had a few pizzas that had mayo on it. It was good. Delicious. <laughs> I'm going to need the cutting board again. So something... <laughs> put it in the oven, baby. Don't put a timer on. That's cool. <laughs> eh. I like these last two days as I've been cooking. <laughs> they put the timer on and it's kind of important. A little important. That could be it. It could be the spoilage. I mean, mayo is mostly fat. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's a bunch of eggs. It is... Homemade mayo is on my, like, to-do list. I actually do have a recipe sitting in my backlog. Oh, boy. You, you missed the Wild Jeff appearance. Um, I've had someone request me to make some void mayo from Stardew Valley. And that's been sitting on my list for a little bit. And I really, really, really want to make it. And I have, like, the concept for it. And then I just keep thinking, oh, man. <laughs> oh, what did I, what did I suggest? Uh-oh. No, poor Kanji. Big kanji, kanji feels. Big kanji feels. Heck yeah, kanji. Taking care of it. Oh, you did it right this time. So, you did. Oh, he's, already he's eating ahead of time. <laughs> so we made this one, and that's currently in the oven. This is the extra inside, so I could have bought two more bell peppers. Um, boop. We did that one. <laughs> the next one we're going to do is a new recipe. In this recipe, I've put pictures. There, no, there's pictures. Ta-da. It's right there. <laughs> um, so the nice... Oh, he actually went right on his bed. Oh. Oh. Fix that camera. <laughs> um, this recipe is currently not on the website. It will be up. Man, it's here. It will be up tomorrow. Uh, I have that write-up basically done and photos. And we're going to have a little bit of kitchen magic today. Because I did make a batch of them earlier. Made half the recipe earlier. So I have okay, my rice cookers off. I still have hot water there. Let me get my mangoes. Mango, mango, mango. I got this one. So I need mangoes and limes and cilantro. Now, the recipe is a mango cilantro creme brulee. Big warning that I do give in the recipe is if you do not like, if you have the unfortunate gene that cilantro tastes like um, soap to you, you will taste that. 
There's not a lot of cilantro in it, but the way we're going to let it do its thing, you will taste the cilantro. <laughs> I had a friend in the weekend I tested this, and he is no go with cilantro. And <laughs> took a scoop and was like, mm -mm. nope, this is weird. <laughs> so if you don't like cilantro, you could do the rest of the recipe. But just don't include the cilantro. It's an easy thing to like completely just cut out. Um, so I, I always keep that in mind for for people who who have that genetic mutation. Is it, is it a mutation? I mean, one of our coworkers that we were mentioning this recipe to was like, I kind of could see the soapiness, but I still like the flavor of cilantro. <laughs> but I wasn't sure if they were tasting it as like a soap. <laughs> or if that's just the, f I don't know. Again, like I said, this recipe can be edited. And it will work just as well. So I'm going to prep this. So you can see I used half a mango. Um, I'm going to watch the timer because I have to. I want to make sure this gets done after that timer finishes, not before. Because it will need to, when I kind of put it in there, in the oven when it's ready. And not have it kind of sitting out there. Worry that would cause issues then. With hot sauce, see, I don't. I my my like tolerance for hot sauce is very low. <laughs> Almost non-existent. No, I could do some, but. Because if they're hey, if they're edible and it's safe to eat, why not? So the recipe calls for two mangoes. Again, we're doing a half recipe, so one and a half. Um, three three mangoes, sorry. Usually, um, one of the three ends up being at the bottom because I wanted. L if you're enjoying this creme brulee, I wanted a little bit of actual mango chunks on the bottom kind of I felt like it elevates it a little bit to have actual fruit because you eat it and you're like oh look here's the fruit this is delicious <laughs> sriracha scented soap so hopefully it's only scented and not like actual so <laughs> sriracha in there because that sounds <laughs> that would be a bad time I was happy the other day at work. I placed an order at this place. And they, they usually at like the tables at the place, they'll have sriracha there. And I was like, okay, hey, I'm, I'm doing this catering order. Let me make sure I get it. And whatever. And I was like, well, however they do it. And then my friend goes, picks it up. While I'm in this meeting. And they come back. And they gave us an entire bottle of sriracha. I was like... Well, that's real nice of them. <laughs> now there's just a bottle of sriracha at work. <laughs> Pay one million dollars and you <laughs> won't make it. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna burn! <laughs> that's a good way to end a friendship, right? <laughs> just to be like, Here's this sweet soap I got you. Oh, just kidding. It has a bunch of peppers. That is for sure one thing I always tell people. If you are working with peppers that are actually spiced or um, so, even if it's just a jalapeno, it's, that's not as hot. But if you start touching your eyes, there's a big issue. So I typically have like a thing, usually I'm out right now, of um, 
plastic gloves just to make sure after I'm done I remove them and I don't have to worry about like touching my eyes or messing that up because that's very bad <laughs> it hurts <laughs> the ideal way for a breakup go okay just enjoy this shower oh my god what's this uh, that's the end of us <laughs> oh no <laughs> so don't do as i do do as i say uh i know the the depth of my knife and how sharp it is um if you're not comfortable with that, just lay the mango down and kind of cut carefully. <laughs> no. And just call that soap divorce soap. Just the, it's done. There you go. So I have my, like, mango. I'm going to go ahead and run the knife through here and just get my little chunks down. I'm going to cut them up a little more because I don't want, I don't want at the bottom this huge piece. I want little itty bitty pieces, which I'll show in the other camera because that one does a good job of showing how it should look. Um. So yeah, I'm excited because I finally had an excuse to, like, buy myself a kitchen torch. It's been one of those things that I'm like, I don't really need it. And then when I saw Girl Wars 2 had, um, these are too big, creme brulee, I was like, okay, it's time. <laughs> it's time to finally buy one and do this. So we're doing this. And, of course, the first time we're setting it up, it's like, okay, make sure we have the fire extinguisher nearby. Just be safe. We don't want any accidents. <laughs> Which we should be fine. This symbolizes how I feel about our connection. Oh, no! <laughs> yep, I think it's, like, rumbling outside. Hopefully it doesn't storm too bad here. Um. <laughs> so, my ta I think with spice in general, you kind of have to keep having more um, spices and just peppers to get used to it and build up that tolerance. I know for me, I can sort of do jalapenos. I usually prefer to go, no, no, thank you. Um, I'll put gochujang, which is a Korean uh, chili paste. I'll put that in things, but I know there's a cap of how hot I could make it. I appreciate it too, because Jeff is able to go ahead and like, he'll try, if something's spicy, he'll try it and go, nope, this is, he knows where my tolerance level sits. I agree. And there are some good, like, spicy spices that can be. I think gochujang is a good example. Or um, chili garlic paste is really good, too, because it adds nice flavor. But I know for me, I'm not going to go adding a whole cup of it. <laughs> I'm going to add a few tablespoons of it to have, like, the essence of it. <laughs> I know Jeff and I were, we went to, I'm going to Jeff on you, because we're fixing that this week. Um, we went to a Korean chicken wing place. And I was like, okay, no, I know I don't like the spicy one, because when they give spicy, it is very spicy. It's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the spicy one. So I had my wings, and he had his wings. We're not, <laughs> he's, he's learned that he does not want those spicy wings anymore, because... It was one of those, like, oh, it tastes good, but it's so spicy that it's kind of hurting. <laughs> this is not fun. So it's sad when you can't even, like, eat all your food because you hit that point where you're like, uh, you did eat them. Most of them. <laughs> I 
No, Pi, we've, we've hit peak romance. <laughs> knowing each other's... Well, no. One of us knowing the other spice, like... <laughs> That's just what happens when you've been married for eight years. Right, so I got a little, little things. So, what I want here is I want a nice bottom layer of just... Doo -doo. Of this. So, I'm gonna turn that camera back on. Stove camera. Big stove camera. Oh, Kanji left. Because he had to go bark at the thunder. So... You can see I have just a layer of it at the bottom. <laughs> You're so young. Oh, now I feel so old. <laughs> All right, so that's prepped. I still have... There's a bit of mango on this still that could get chopped up. So I'm going to grab my... So the next thing I am going to need is my blender, because... can't see. It's right here. Makes funny noises. So I got my blender. And camera. And that's just me. <laughs> Kanji left. Um, I'm going to chop up this mango and the rest of this mango and put it in here and then we're going to puree it with the li some lime juice. And then we're going to prepare that with some egg yolks, I think. Yeah. We'll take our time with this. Careful. Oh, so carefully. Now, with that bottom layer, I think you don't want to... You want to make sure you don't go beyond, like, a single layer of it. Because if you add too much, then it's going to end up being say too liquidy, but it, w it w probably will affect the cook time. And I know it's important with a creme brulee, and I mentioned this in the recipe. Um, before you start... Okay, Kanji. I get it. I get it. <laughs> um... Before you start cooking and mixing things, just prep. Like, I'm doing it right now real nice and slow. I haven't even started, like, the heavy cream portion because I'm going to let that do its thing. I'm going to let it do it slowly. I don't, I don't want to rush anything. So I'm prepping my mango, so I'm cutting it ahead of time. Don't, no need to rush. I will, after I cut all this, I'm going to show you. So I was hoping, I had my fingers crossed, to have three recipes this week from Guild Wars 2, from the Ascended recipe stuff. But one of the three did not work. <laughs> and I have, I have the, I say it, it didn't work. It's still good, but I wasn't happy with it. <laughs> I'll show that off in a moment because I do have, I think, like two pieces left. Hey, Kanji wants to protect us. I would say before, before this house, Kanji was very whatever about storms, like 100% not a care in the world. Now when storms start for some reason, he likes to be like, hey, Thunder, you stop that. You stop that right now. It's like, Kanji, please. Okay. Let's be safe. Let's be a little, a little, little nice safe. Like, 
This mango is not as like vibrant as the other one. It should be fine. Onishan. Uh oh, Kanji, you got a new sub, so you get the treaty. I mentioned the word. Thank you, Onichan, for that five month sub. You get a treat. You gotta get on your bed. You gotta tell thank you to Onichan, too. Get on the bed. Get on the bed. Heck yeah. I'm gonna have to wash my hands. So we're gonna give him a salmon power bite. Real salmon. Re Real salmon recipe. <laughs> Can you sit? No, you gotta sit. Can I have the paw? Oh, why, thank you. There you go. Yes. That's why I think Kanji has like slowly l learned to enjoy the Wednesday streams because <laughs> Wednesday streams he occasionally gets treats. Ain't that right, Pooch? Ain't that right? How are you doing today, Onis-chan? Oh my gosh. One of the other trees that I have up here are like these little mini minnows. Um, and he loves them. <laughs> Something else I've learned he really likes is lamb. Um, I think a few weeks back, yeah, I did the lamb jerky for... I did some lamb jerky for Final Fantasy XIV. And... I had too much lamb, so I was like, okay, I'll just do some plain ones and make it for him. He demolished, like, the, the, he'll demolish those treats when I give it to him, but he's also, like, I think this weekend I was making lamb. He comes into the kitchen just sniff, 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 sniff. I'm like, oh, God. Now Kanji knows the smell of lamb. <laughs> I don't know if you could give dogs mangoes. I don't know what the rules are. Chili, like how uh, how cold are we talking? Definitely, it's wet here too. <laughs> Nothing too bad. Just like a little bit of rumbling, a little bit of rain. No, no floods. Not a hurricane. Google says yes. I don't know. Yeah, we don't really give Kanji beef other. I think that's one of the ones he's never too excited about. He's excited about lamb. He's excited about there's these treats that we have that are like dried fish skins. Actually, I'm not going to grab it. Because if I do, he's going to be like, oh my god. Yeah, seeds in general aren't. 70 degrees sounds lovely. Let me say that right now. I'm jealous. If we have anything else happen, we can give Kanji that little piece. Because that went on the floor. <laughs> the little Kanji piece, if needed. Oh my gosh. Yeah, wait. He had... No, it was chicken. with was duck hearts? I think a lot of those, like, gamier animals work really well for dogs. Because it has that extra smell to it. And they're like, ooh, what's that? Ooh, yes, please. Yes, please. Whoop, whoop. I actually wonder how hard... So the issue with duck is duck's expensive. I was like, how difficult would it be? Because I went on a jerky kick after I did the lamb one, which... It's like, oh, jerky's not too bad to do at home. You don't need a dehydrator. It's quicker with a dehydrator and probably would be a little more chewy if you do it with a dehydrator. I think it's too specialized of a thing of kitchen equipment to own, and I think most people wouldn't have it. So I avoid doing... So I, I don't own one, so I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not going to use that. But if you have your oven and you set it real low, it kind of acts like a... It'll dehydrate the meat as long as you cook it nice and slow. But I was surprised. Yeah, you just like take meat, cut it real thin, and then put it in a marinade overnight. After that, you take like a, a baking sheet with a wire rack, and then you put the meat there. 
let it sit in the oven for like four or five hours at least. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> Works real nice. Give me more, more mango. Oops. I do not have an Instapot. Oh my god. I, I want more excuses to use duck. <laughs> like, it's so good. Yes, the, excuse us, the rad goal. Um, I think I was currently looking at a recipe. I think it was Final Fantasy. Um, it was duck. Well, no, excuse me. In the game, it's dodo, uh, and I was like, "Well, should I should I use duck instead?" I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Can't find dodo birds anymore. See, I do not have an instant pot, even though I know a lot of people have it. It's just one of those. The creator. Thank you for the raid. Kaji, you gotta get over here. You gotta get angry. You gotta... I'll make him speak. Kaji, there's people coming in. Speak! <laughs> oh, they're angry face too. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Heck yeah. Can I get a shout out for the creator? For that nice little raid. I love their little... Oh, look at... We got that food fight stuff. Heck yeah. Kanji, protect, protecting the chat. <laughs> oh, not, but now you're not in the camera anymore. Get that food fight. <sighs> um, what is... There we go. Um, yes, so right now I think Twitch is running a if you spend two hundred bit if you use two hundred bits in any chat, um, you'll get those weird like little food fight things. Warning with them, they don't last forever, even if you unlock it, they're gonna keep the most loved ones. Um, but you get a few and then you randomly give people that in chat. It is a silly little event. They're cute very cute items but I think the unfortunate thing is yeah they go away at the end of September which I was like oh, okay I was excited for them I was like it's time to mine for for the bit no never mind never mind all right currently putting in mango skin there so I currently have some stuffed bell peppers in the oven which that recipe is there right now i am currently preparing a batch of mango cilantro creme brulee that recipe is not on the site actually wait, i can see the picture the pictures here <laughs> stuffed bell peppers these are both from guild wars 2 and then the mango cilantro creme brulee which the recipe will be up on the site tomorrow and it's not there right now but you can get those tomorrow they're delicious. <laughs> Which now at this point, I've made this creme brulee a few times. <laughs> and it's worked nicely. Um, as I warn people with this creme brulee, because there is cilantro, if you think cilantro tastes like soap, do not use the cilantro in the recipe. Your creme brulee will taste like soap. It is a simple swap out to just not use them. <laughs> just, just don't put the cilantro in. <laughs> Which we're not working with that yet. We will be soon. Just don't include it, and then you'll have a lovely mango lime creme brulee. Trying to get as much of this mango out without getting into the seed. I know it's when I saw like the list of ingredients that they. The, the list, okay, so Guild Wars 2 added Ascended Cooking yesterday? Yesterday. Um, and I was looking through the list of food, and I was like, oh my god. 
mango cilantro creme brulee. That sounds that sounds fancy. I like that. So I definitely was like, yep, need to do that. Time to make it. And it ended up, I, it was one of, there's a, a few recipes that I was worried about. I'll pull the one. I wasn't worried about the hollandaise, the salsa eggs benedict. That one was fine and it worked. Um, the creme brulee I was worried about because I hadn't done creme brulee before. And I was like, ah, whatever, it should work. Um, the other recipe, which will not be a recipe now. Um, I need to rework it. I could show I could show you it. Well, thank you for stopping by, the creator. Um, you have a wonderful evening, and thank you for the raid. But on here. So this recipe would have been the third one. <laughs> would have been the third one of the week, but it did not work. I mean, it looks looks okay-ish. So this is a sesame cheesecake, which is also in the game. Now the issue I had with it is, well, my edge, I goofed my edges, but the there's black sesame and a white sesame layer. This cheesecake is very one-toned, <laughs> and having a slice of it is fine, but it gets a little monotone after a while. So I think I need to, I want to rework it, one, to be... I think mini uh, cheesecakes, because after seeing the how the rest how the ascended recipes work, they're feasts, so you want to have ev everyone have like a, their own little portion. I want to make mini ones, so people could have their own individual cheesecake, and I want to change that top layer to be a vanilla layer instead of the um, instead of just sesame, just to kind of like break up the flavor profiles there. So I'm gonna do now. Yes, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this bowl and my cover and my blender. I think I think that switch will make a difference for that one. So that's a recipe that'll eventually show up. Even though Jeff said, Vicky, stop making <laughs> stop making cheesecakes. Because for some reason, when I make cheesecake, they like to have to be done several times over. <laughs> and the big one, one big example is the uh, perfectly preserved pie <laughs> in the Fallout cookbook. Made it once, it was fine. Made it a second time because pictures I originally had, because I have it on the website. Made that recipe again, and I was like, okay, this is fine. Just, it takes like two or three, like, it's like a two-day process to do. Um, and then I had to make it a third time. I think maybe the, f the second time it just didn't look, oh, they said the edges looked too ragged because I used a knife, and that's when I learned, oh, if you want nice, clean edges, for a cheesecake, you use um, floss, dental floss. You use plain, boring, plastic dental floss, and it'll get you nice, clean cuts. So I had to make it a third time. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, we forgot to tell you we need a cover. So I had to make that cake a fourth time. <laughs> so I was just like, done. <laughs> I don't want to make this anymore. Which... I'm surprised how many people have made that recipe because when I look at it, I'm like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> There's a few recipes in there. I'm like, oh God, what did I do? But they're worth it. They're delicious. Okay, I'm going to mute for a moment. I was like, I don't want to hurt your ears. You, <laughs> you did a good job. I thought it may look good. That that is a complicated. That one, that one took two t two tries. <laughs> the first attempt, I was sad with. I was like, oh, perfect, this is gonna work, and I made it, and the numbers were a little weird, and I was like, 
oh, this is close, but it's not good. Well, I'm taking this to the company potluck today. They're going to enjoy it. And of course, everyone eating it is like, oh, this is really good. I'm like, no, it's a bad one. <laughs> I did it wrong. That's why I love I love taking recipes to work because a lot of times I'll I'll bring them and I'm like I only bring them to work obviously if they're edible, <laughs> but if they're like a failed recipe I'm like oh this is bad <laughs> I warn people it's a, it's, a, it's not the right way I'm like it's it's just not right <laughs> they're like what are you talking about this is great I'm like no it's close it'll be better next time. <laughs> oh no. Hey, sometimes you need that frozen treat. Right? <laughs> Just to change it up a little bit. <laughs> so right now I am squeezing my lime juice in here. It's so with creme brulee, a lot of times what people like to tell you to do is you want to pass your custard after it's been whipped and everything through a mesh strainer problem is we're using actual fruit in our puree so we're gonna lose that if we do that Whoop. lime please Ooh. Whoop. i believe the peppers might be done let me take a look tap 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 actually i'm gonna give them five more minutes I put the lime in, and we wanna, so we want to make sure this is as smooth as possible um, without having to deal with a mesh strainer. I'm going to mute again. There's just like chunks kind of sitting here so I need to scrape this down a little bit mm -hmm. one more time okay that's good. So now I'm going to transfer this to a bowl. I actually don't think I need the cutting board anymore, so I'll probably move that out. You know what I need to write on that recipe? Let me change. It's like use mangoes. Let me put the word large mangoes because those are big mangoes. They're actually labeled as large mangoes, so. Because I guess if you buy three small ones, that would be a little, a little different. Shoot. Um, I need to rinse this real quick. Quick rinse through. I'm going to need this eventually. I've left this here. So before I start adding egg yolks in there, I'm going to get my heavy cream mixture set up. <laughs> Looking in all the wrong spots for the things I need. Mango. Mango and lime. Cilantro. Okay, so I need to get... I think, I think, heavy. I'm going to get my heavy cream. I'm going to get the eggs out also while I'm in there. 
Okay, perfect. Heavy cream. Not those eggs. One, two, three. Now I gotta keep reminding myself doing a half order. So I only need one cup. I'm gonna need that. So I can save my egg whites. So again, you kinda see with this process for this particular recipe. I've not started any cooking. I've just been, nothing's being heated at this point. I'm prepping all of the elements and making sure they're in their place before I start running with it. Because these crumber like can be very sensitive with its temperatures. Whoops. I actually will probably start this up first. So I'm going to put the heavy cream in here. I'm going to go ahead and scrape out as much as I can. Going to listen to that beep at us. I guess before I start this, I'm going to pull out the bell papers. Change that temperature of this down by 25. It is. It was currently set at 350, but I want to... See, I put these things and one fell over. Oh, with that kind of openish. So you can see, those crisped up, and then those have softened. Boop, boop. We don't want the the bell peppers to be s like mushy. You still want them to have that that tougher texture because we want it. I'll just turn that off for a moment. We want that nice crunch to be in there. <laughs> well, thank you, Pally. I'm very excited about them. So I'm gonna now shuffle them into the background. Not shuffle them. Because that'll make a very bad noise. <laughs> They're still there. Kind of smiling in the background. Now back to the recipe we are working on now. I have my heavy cream. I have my cilantro. Which again. If you do not like cilantro. Just don't put it in. Since I'm doing a half recipe. Usually it would be. I'm doing the full six portions it would be two cups of heavy cream a fourth cup of sugar but we're doing half so only two tablespoons of sugar and then and then some salt so I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat on we want to have it on between like a um, low, medium, low kind of situation. We want our sugar to melt, and then we want the cilantro to kind of simmer in it for a little bit. Again, we want the flavor. We do want the flavor in there. Um, we don't want it to come to a boil. We don't want the temperature to be very high up and it scalding the, the milk. We're just looking to melt and get the flavor of the cilantro. If you're not using the cilantro, once the, the sugar kind of melts and it's hit a simmer point, you probably could simmer it for probably two, three minutes instead. Um, and then be done with it. Because you don't want to be too hot because when you start slowly introducing it into this mixture, you don't want your egg yolks to get scrambled. <laughs> Which 
side note, I accidentally did two days ago. <laughs> now here are some tips for if you have to whisk something while slowly pouring something in. This is definitely, thank you YouTube videos for showing me. I have wet a kitchen towel, which we will be using this again afterwards. I'm putting it kind of here in a circle, and I'm going to sit my bowl here. Now, the nice thing is, as long as I'm not like tugging at it, if I find my whisk, I used to have two whisks, but I think one of them like <laughs> melted on me. Um, but if I go ahead and whisk this one-handed, I don't have to hold on to it. It's not moving which is what we want because we're going to be pouring very slowly. This is the main action. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a swirl so the sugar kind of gets in there. If you want, kind of like muddle that cilantro a little bit. Again, the cilantro is going to get pulled out from here. We're just having it in there so it kind of like seeps into the milk. I don't want you to have to deal with like, oh, here's a bunch of chunks of cilantro. Now, while that's heating up, I'm going to go ahead and swap to this. God, you vanished again. Main and stove. Boop. Ah. What I'm going to do is separate my egg yolks from my egg whites. It's very important when you're separating them that no egg whites end up here. So take your time with it. If your egg yolk breaks, just leave it in the bowl and move on to another one. Um, I do this by hand completely. I reach in, kind of like with a claw look, and kind of give it a jiggle. I did have like a set of, another set of eggs that I think might have been older and I had a hard time removing that, but like this, it just kind of like separated already and now I have my egg yolk just in my hand. So it will be a little messier, but I think the results, you get a lot quicker and it's easier to grab it. I don't recommend doing it with like the egg shell because if you do it with the egg shell, you run the risk of shell getting in there and it just being a sad time. It could also, because the edges are sharp, it'll possibly risk breaking the yolk a lot more. So you don't, these are things you do not want. So I'm going to go ahead. So I like to like kind of like run it through my fingers and then let it kind of drip in and eventually separate nicely. And once I have my egg yolk, plop. It's going straight in there. Again, in this bowl, all we have is mango and lime juice. If you would like the recipe to have a little bit more of a lime kick, you could put lime zest in. It's probably something I would recommend doing if you're kicking out the, the cilantro from it. Um, but since lime isn't the main flavor we're looking for in this, I don't include lime zest in it. Because I think it would overpower things a little bit. Heck yeah. Jax, we're just making food slowly. I mean, you see in the far, far background, <laughs> there's some... Whoop. <laughs> this one's kind of sticking. Um... We got the, the stuffed bell peppers already there. Okay, there we go. That's just an egg yolk. So if you do that and you separate your egg yolks from your egg whites, your egg whites probably have a fridge time of about three days. So make sure you use them. Something bad is going to happen. They do start to get a little funky and refrigeratory. I'm going to go ahead and put that 10 minute timer. It's not too hot right now, but this is what we want. Doing its thing. 
Got my egg yolks. We're well, bam. Keep wanting to walk that way, but I'm like, nope. Wire. There is a wire there. Oh, Jeff, if you would like a pepper, there's peppers. <laughs> or if you want to split one. So we have those ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and whisk in the egg yolks in here. So we got that nice whisk. Want to make sure it's all incorporated. And now we wait. Um, one thing with creme brulees is you are going to need to have a deep baking dish. Because we're going to put these ramekins in here. We're also going to use this towel on the bottom to make sure our ramekins don't move when we're taking it in and out. In here, we're going to be adding water to it because we want to make sure there it has like a little water bath so no heat's kind of hitting too hard on here and it doesn't burn our custard. Yeah, already with this, the sugar has incorporated into here. So at this point, the essence, the essence of cilantro, <laughs> not a salad. Heck yeah. Just waiting. Let's put that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Camera's too dark. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the, da the dailies weren't too terrible. Modern day. Julia Child is definitely a an inspiration of mine. She did, does a lot of a lot of that French cooking, which I don't touch too often, but just her personality and everything. It's like, oh hi. Look, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Lemon drop, how are you? Let me say your recipe you put out this week, the pixel bear one, uh, very good looking. That little chocolate work you did, very nice. Looks very delicious. No, no, instant, instant pot cheesecakes. Yeah, I know. I know, some people are just so excited about it. Actually, I have a friend down here that I think has had, like, been doing that a bunch. The cheese, the Instant Pot cheese, I was going to say cheese steak. Cheese cake. <laughs> now, clearly, I'm looking for cheese steak in my life. Oh, heck yeah, yeah. Just um, let me know. <laughs> my schedule can be funky. It's going to be funky for a bit. But let me know when you guys would enjoy having me around. <laughs> uh, I know that feeling of having to throw something out because you're just like, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> it failed. It's bad. <laughs> it happens. Especially when you're... I think desserts definitely does it the most. It's such a pain. <laughs> it definitely takes getting used to. I, I think the first few times I had it happen, I was like, no, but I can't. I have to fix this somehow. It has to get fixed. But then after a while, you learn, okay, if this isn't fixing itself, and you're going through the process, and you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> I need to restart. <laughs> I typically, if a recipe does screw up, I will try to eat it as long as it's edible. Um, 
there are times where I'm just like, what did I do? This is completely wrong. This tastes bad. <laughs> this ain't happening. And that's the nice thing. That's I think something new people in the kitchen need to kind of get used to, where you're going to fail. It's going to happen. Um, most of the time, your mistakes won't look as pretty, but it'll still be close enough that you can kind of eat it. But you learn from that. Yeah. The moment, yeah, the moment something tastes no good, you go, oh, I guess, I guess we're doing, actually, <laughs> speaking of this recipe, so I made it the first time and it worked fine. Perfect. And then Monday night, I was in a rush. That's what it was. And I was putting it all together. I put it in and I put it in and I cooked it. And for some reason I was like, it needs to go in there for 50 minutes. 50 minutes is way too long for the creme brulees. It needs about 35 to 45 minutes to sit in there and do its thing. Uh, when I took it out and I let it, I was like, okay, this looks fine. Kind of a little browner than I want. Put it there, and then I come back later, and I'm like, this is really, this is really jiggly. And I moved it, and I'm like, oh my god, the eggs curdled. And it's just like, it was a mess. I was like, what did I do? <laughs> How did I goop this? The eggs were hitting that point where some of them were starting to cook like a quiche. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> what a dumb mistake. So yeah, I had to throw all those out. And then I had to make them again. Yes, the my kitchen magic batch <laughs> I had to make again yesterday. It was just like, oh man. <laughs> oh no, on fire. <laughs> the dangers of uh, stopping by one of my streams. I'm in a constant state of talking about food. Even when I'm playing games, I'm talking about food. Um, actually, because I, I do the website, a lot of times when I'll jump into a new game or Jeff's playing a new game, I'll be like, oh, wait, stop. Go look at that table. What's on that table? <laughs> I need to see the food that's there. See, my temperature's getting too high now. So I've reduced my temperature because I don't want it to get too too hot and happy I even trained some of my friends too with the way I look at games to be like oh if you see a, if you see any food in a game just send me an email or send me a text message and be like here's a picture <laughs> here you go <laughs> hope you enjoy it almost there Let's see what we're gonna we're gonna cheat some soon. Cause once we put these in the oven, we're gonna be like, fast forward forty five minutes. Ta -da! Oh hello, would you like a bell pepper? Oh, you're playing roulettes. <laughs> playing roulettes. <laughs> ah. Do you want to split one? Yeah, yeah, because I still have this to deal with. Um, so let's take one. I guess I should take a picture of it. Trying to get, again, used to like, oh, here after stream is on Instagram. Here's a picture. Here's the thing I did today. Let's get a new plate. Oh, for me. My plate. You think you could set up the, the kitchen torch? Ooh, that's still hot. Actually, before I do that. <laughs> lemon drop cake. <laughs> yes. Before we deal with that, I'm going to deal with this. So I've heated this up. Ta -da, it's all heated. Beautiful. Thing. Um, so I'm setting this here. <laughs> Cake, yes, please. Man, I think recently I've been like, ah, oh, cake, perfect, yes. 
just screw it on you. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get to it. We're gonna have some kitchen magic soon. So everything's gonna kind of like wrap up very quickly. Um, and so I have this, this is the, the possible kind of mango piece. I want to remove the cilantro from here. Because it's finished and this needs to be babies right away. After this, because, yeah. Come back later. <laughs> I'll call you over. <laughs> so, because there's egg yolks in here, we want to make sure to do this slowly. We don't want our eggs to get cooked. So we're going to vary. <laughs> Again, as we've mentioned before, if you do not, if, you, if it tastes like soap to you, just no cilantro in there. You're good. Probably add some some lime zest instead to get that little extra flavor in there. <laughs> so the cilantro did a good job of kind of dyeing the, the heavy cream a little bit green. So I'm going to go ahead and keep a whisking, whisking, whisking. So it's important to do this all slowly and just kind of whisk it away and let it go. Um, I know one thing that can be scary, actually it's funny, both of the recipes that I did this week for Guild Wars 2 are ones where you're kind of messing with egg yolks. Egg yolks are temperamental. They can be rude. You got to make sure that nothing, not, that you don't, you don't make them angry. I would say between the two of these, the hollandaise sauce is a little more finicky. This one, the big thing is just making sure not to overcook them. <laughs> making sure not to overcook them and in not introducing the, the milk too quickly. The biggest risk with the hollandaise... I actually talked with Jeff about it. I was like, should I do the, the salsa hollandaise like, on stream? I'm like, I've not broken a hollandaise yet. That is when it would happen. It would happen on stream. And I'd be like, god damn it. Yeah. Mixing, mixing. Yeah, once I pour this into each of the containers. Did I? I don't want to turn that back on. I'll do that in a moment. I'm going to turn my oven back on. I turned it off to let it cool some. Okay, at this point, I've basically added. I've introduced the heat slowly. So the eggs have been able to to temper correctly and come up to temperature without like cooking quickly. You add up too quickly, you're going to have scrambled eggs. I'm not going for scrambled eggs. Fake. 325. That one's still up. So you can see it's still pretty liquidy but it's all in there. And as we cook it, it'll be nice and delicious. I could see why that would be a a reason not to like them. And hollandaise could be... I really like Higgs Benedict. <laughs> and I'm like, guilty of that. I've definitely started falling more in love with hollandaise that are not just the egg flavor, but it's also like, there's a, not just egg and butter, but there's like the one I did this week had chip, uh, adobo sauce in it. So it had a little bit of a chipotle flavor to it. Oh, poached eggs can be a pain, but once you find your method, oh my gosh, the method that works, what am I looking for? This, I'm looking for this, this ladle <laughs> that's right in front of me. I think if I was less lazy, <laughs> I would probably typically do uh, a poached egg. Take a little more effort than just frying an egg. So I'm always like, ugh. 
and give this a quick mix. So I've transferred this into the like a cup just to make it easier for me to pour this in. Um, because we were whisking, there are going to be a lot of air bubbles in here. And I will show you my like method for getting rid of them. <laughs> Which kind of sort of works. Most of the time. Some of the time. <laughs> If while you're doing this, if you see any chunks, like actually in there, kind of see a little bit of cilantro that, that snuck away, just watch for it and pick it out. You read of it. Yeah, we have the mango and I see you. I see you cilantro back here. So I'm filling these most of the way up. Most of the way up. Do 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 do. Okay. So most of these. Filling them up a little more. Okay, so I can get rid of this bowl. And I can kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to go squeeze the... Oh, I don't really need to squeeze this out. So that wet towel that we had below holding our thing, I'm going to put that into the baking tray. As mentioned earlier, it's going to be used to just kind of help hold the place so these don't jiggle around. Because we are going to be taking them in and out in and out once but there's water and we don't want water going in there now that camera is on over there kanji what are you doing out there get in bed silly so you can see that's what the top looks like we have some a little bit of bubbleage happening so I have just a, uh, words, <laughs> a little fire thing, <laughs> fire starter, <laughs> words, a fire, a lighter, <laughs> there you go, got it eventually, a lighter, um, the heat will, if you just kind of like get it close to it, it's not hot enough that it's going to start like cooking anything, but it will like spook the bubbles away. I tried doing this method with the kitchen torch and <laughs> that was a lot hotter than this and was causing things to kind of cook. I got it eventually lighter. <laughs> oh, words, words escape me. It, it works surprisingly well. I was like, okay, like I said, don't do it with a kitchen torch. I guess it depends on the kitchen torch you have. Not with the kitchen torch I have. <laughs> Tried it. It started burning. It started like crisping things up. Right. You kind of see it's like less bubbly. Now I'm just going to keep repeating this. Are you? I'm going to kind of fix this because it's kind of tell it being a little lumpy. I want it to be mostly flat. Oop. And repeat. There we go. The biggest risk you run with this is I, I saw, I did some test runs of this, and if you leave the bubbles on, it'll kind of like brown up because of all the air that's in there and it looks funky it's not as pristine looking if you skip this step it's definitely a you can you probably should don't skip it 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 helps it makes it look a lot better you'll be happier with the end result 
be able to have end results. Now, one thing you're going to have to be patient with when you're doing these is you are going to cook them and you're going to let them cool to room temperature and then you have to put them in the fridge. You will not be eating at least for three hours. Like you probably could enjoy them that day, but it, at least three hours. I do overnight just to let it kind of set completely and be good. So I've done this. Now behind me, I have set up my water boiler and it's set to 175. I have the temperature set there. I was, I don't want it to be boi like hot boiling water that I add. I think that might have had a factor to do with my goof up on Monday. So I've been keeping it at the 175, so not boiling, but hot. Um, for our water bath. Now we get to wait. Oh, I'm like hiding now. What I want to do is fill the baking dish. Making sure not to put any of the water. This is I'm transferring it from there into this nice gooseneck um, pot because it helps me control how quickly it goes out. I want to make sure I get none in there because if we have any water in there, it's going to cause issues and then it's going to cause the, the custard to kind of like separate. So this will be a little bit of a patience thing, just kind of let it do its thing, but we're just making sure that nothing... Nothing spilled out. Doop. And now repeat. Jeff bought this, uh, this little pot for himself uh, for like his coffee stuff. And I appreciate it because it definitely is a nice little device that I get to use too for when I'm making cheesecakes to make sure that it doesn't cook too quickly. But it holds like just like here you go. Kind of patiently put it in. It comes out nicely. So I like to go about half to three fourths ish full. Um, do at least half. Um, a little higher helps because you'll be able to make sure there's n no big heat in there. Um, the towel is going to be completely safe in the oven. It's wet, so it's not going to light up or burn or anything like that. I'm just pushing my towel down. Anyway, I'm going to switch the cameras real quick. So before I put them... Oh, this part's going to spook me. <laughs> the correct option is don't do what... Huh? Don't do what I'm doing. Just kind of put them into the oven right as you go. Alright, so you can see water. It's hot water, so I'm not going to be dipping my hand too far. So it's up to like about here on the custards and you can see how high the custards are filled they're cleared off of their bubbles there are a little little itty bit of bubbles but that's it so my oven is now set to the 325 i'm going to put this in and i'm going to put a timer on for 35 minutes now the stream might be done before those get done um but we'll see. So I'm going to set that timer for 35 minutes. Uh, 35 or 30. I'll probably check five minutes before they get done. But you want to, at that like 30 minute, 35 minute mark, you want to kind of start checking it because you want the edges to be solid and you still want it to have a little bit of a jiggle. If you have an instant read thermometer, something I highly recommend having, um, you can pop that in there and check for it to be at about 170, any 170, 175, any higher than that, you're running the risk of it getting too hot and then starting to cook. Now, my kitchen torch. 
I call it a kitchen torch. It is, it is a welding <laughs> thing. We get, we got we got craziness happening. So I have some already pre-done. My ones that didn't fail. But before I do that, I'm gonna cut open one of these. Beep beep. Uh, main and me, just main. So we made this. Here's this. A bell pepper, which I'll take a picture of. Before I forget. Yeah, that's a nicer organ. That way. Taking pictures with my phone is so weird. I guess not, because I do that when I go out. Okay, Jeff. I'm gonna... Looks exactly like the picture. Heck yeah. Got them red bell peppers. If you don't like red bell peppers, like I know, uh, Fire Sold, you mentioned some people do not like, your family does not like the red and the green. Switch them out for the, unfortunately, more expensive ones. Um, as I mentioned, the bell pepper is cooked, but we don't want it to be mush, so it's still going to have that crunch. I'm going to cut this in half. If you want this recipe to be completely vegetarian, just add more mushrooms, remove the meat. So, there's, I, I, this recipe can easily be, I think, adjusted. And so, what am I doing? The other camera's better. I think you stop going to that camera. Uh, still going to main. <laughs> Ta da! So, we have our filling in there, which we use the ground turkey instead of the beef. And then it has a bunch of mushrooms in there, an onion, and then tomato paste, tomato sauce, all that wonderful stuff. Ta-da! Okay, Jeff. If you'd like a half, you can have a half. I wonder if I should do... Yeah, I should do... My mom's... My mom's secret ingredient. Not necessary. But it's definitely just the thing my mom did. <laughs> secret ingredient. Mayo. <laughs> Something that you'd go, why mayo? It gives you... No, not sriracha. It's the mayo. I can, I can change it. Watch it's like magic. Just the main scene, because Kanji's not in it anymore. Um, no, he's being a butt. And he's not going to want to be in here soon, because the, the torch is going to get turned on. So the, the mayo gives a little bit of that creamy texture. Standing right next to the... Oh, you want some? Some mayo? Yeah. yeah. Have some mayo. So all you do with the mayo is you just mix the filling with it. They're just like, oh, that's so much better. <laughs> I usually don't mention it because it, it definitely is kind of an odd ingredient. Now your pepper's not going to be as lovely stuffed anymore because you're kind of making a mess. But I like what it adds to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. We're going to have kitchen magic. Oh my gosh. 35 minutes have passed. And then three hours have passed because we let it cool and do all of its magic. Oh my gosh. We got a creme brulee that's set and everything. Boop. Uh, still got main. So this one has set. Touch it. Doesn't do anything. It's there. It has no more jiggles because it's set there. Now the last element of a creme brulee that is usually needed is you add a nice layer of sugar. 
I need a torch. <laughs> Which should work still. I think Kanji probably saw it come out and it's like, no thank you. I tried doing this with like sugar in the raw and it just took longer to burn and it, no, <laughs> wasn't worth it. <laughs> Regular old white sugar. So I'm going to add an amount. And I don't want it to be too thick of a layer, which I'll show you the show you it real quick. So it's kind of just there. Nice layer. It's kind of evenly spread. And then here we go. Safety first. It is locked. I'm going to unlock the gas to let that flow. And now this is unlocked. Now I'm going to turn it on. A fire. And then I'm going to just... I'm going to just do this until it crisps up. Burn it like it's an enemy. Exactly. I mean, at that point, you're going to get it. So something you can do at this point. Ta-da! You see we have this nice layer. If you want more, I feel like I want a little more. And then this down. So you could add a little extra sugar on there and then do another extra caramelization on there. Safety first. Put the lock on and turn the gas off. Ta -da! We had fire. I'm so jealous of the, the hot, spicy pepper, Jeff. I think all I. One thing to note be careful after you use the torch because I kind of like. I felt it. This is all very hot. <laughs> it is extremely hot. The bottom of it is. The top of it is. So don't. Save you first. It's been so. I've wanted I, i've been spooked by this a little bit i'll admit um but i was happy to finally be like okay you know what it's time it's time to finally get gutsy and <laughs> and make this and buy one and do something do a creme brulee um i guess the next step too would be getting oh no i was dumb anyway getting like a sous vide and doing that <laughs> with it right Safety first. Yes. So it's all turned off and locked. Keep that in a safe space. Don't put it in a high heat area. Example, a garage in the summer. Um, so I'm not going to be able to dress it up like you would in game because I cut all of the mango. <laughs> um, except for the one that fell on the floor. So I have this. I believe my sugar. Yep. Got a nice like glass layer there. I think we'll be able to show off. So if you want to garnish it like this image, um, let this cool. Like don't put anything on immediately after it. Let it cool a little bit. So I, at this point, it's probably good because it's not too hot. Put a slice of mango on top and then a piece of cilantro or a bit of cilantro to have that look in the game. I also and a I think a slice of lime. Something that I do think is nice to do with this, even though there is lime in the recipe. I'm gonna grab a lime out of the fridge. So we'll at least be able to decorate it that way. Give it a little cut. And a cut. And you're like, woohoo, here it is with lime. A little piece of lime. Yeah, that's how I'll take the picture. 
a little sad. Not exactly. Also, oops, I missed the follow. I swear, my computer in here is not. Icy Bank. Thank you for the follow. It's it doesn't make noises in here when when people follow. I need to figure out why it does that. It doesn't do that here. Boop. Nope. I don't even have that on. Uh, main and stove. Little camera. Hold on. There it is with its little sad line piece. Actually, I'm going to switch the. I'm going to go ahead. Before I crack it, before I put the lime in, still, still get him in. Go ahead here, and you kind of so we have a nice, a nice crunch, crunch. I don't know if that's picking it up, but we'll pretend it is. So then I'm able to just crack it open, and then we get that nice, like shattered look. Here you go. <laughs> Enjoy. That's still very good. <laughs> well, thank goodness. Then you could add that little extra lime in there that you would get with it. There's also the delicious layer of mango on the bottom. Let's see, if you add the lime, it's obviously going to kind of take away from the crunch a little bit. There's less mango at the bottom of this one. There's some little chunks down there. But delicious. Ta -da. We've made it all. We did it. We made the food. So for those of you that are playing the Lures 2 and um, are currently doing the Ascended Cooking stuff, if there is any recipe on that list that you're like, oh my gosh, yes please, let me, can can you remake this? Message me um, on Twitter, um, on here, if, you, if there's a specific one you'd like to see. And I'll take a look into it and see how, how I get it done. It may take a bit. But I will get to it eventually. And yeah. Um. I actually did turn the timer on. Um, I'm going to let that go. Um, and let it cook. And tomorrow the post will be up for this recipe. So you'll be able to see all the pictures and all the instructions on how to make the mango cilantro creme brulee. Uh, it's kind of a hot it's it is an ascended cooking <laughs> recipe definitely is oh. what do we got? see it's fine oh, look at <laughs> crow that's so good <laughs> oh it's beautiful i love it <laughs> that's me Actually, the first the first day we turned this thing on, we were like, "Okay, here we go." And it was kind of spooky. We had the, the fire extinguisher out just in case things went bad, but it all worked. It was all fine. It was safe. Oh my god, I love it. Um, so I'm gonna wrap up tomorrow. I will be continuing my wonderful adventures in Minecraft with my buddies, uh, the Badger to be and uh, Sam and Jeff and sorry, other people who decided to join us. Um, that might be happening a little earlier than the usual 7 o'clock time. I'm not sure exactly when, but we'll see. Depends on how uh, Jeff and my schedule goes. But it sh it'll happen tomorrow. And yeah, let's see. <laughs> oh, Jeff, you're welcome. And Senpai, you're welcome. Thank you for sitting around watching me talk and cook. I'm going to take a look at Twitch and see who's who's twitching up. 
Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna set. Let me see if he's still doing. No, they're not cooking anymore. I'm gonna send you all over to Lay Loves Lunch. Looks like he's making some pizza. Potato pizza. With a vegan mozzarella sauce. Okay, yeah. I'm going to send you all over there. He's another member of the t uh, the Bone-In team. Uh, so you get to send, send the love there and enjoy it. So yeah, everyone have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful dinner or breakfast or whatever you're having. And then yeah, I will see you all tomorrow.